Hey guys, welcome back to part 12 of the 2000 season. We're at Hungary for the Hungarian Grand Prix, the Hungar Oil Ring. First opened for Formula 1 in 1986. I'll let you in on a little secret. This is my worst track by far on the calendar. We're in qualifying at the moment on our third flying lap actually. That's how bad I am, I, I actually had to do three flying laps. Coming around the final corner, Hakkinen on provisional pole at the moment, but I doubt we'll be uh, troubling his time at the top of the table as we come across the line. So 120.694, only one second down, but this is a short lap. That puts us third at the moment, but let's see where we are on the starting grid. So Hakkinen gets his third pole position in a row, qualifying on pole obviously. Dominic Foster will start second with Michael Schumacher in third, David Coulthard the second, McLaren down in fourth. Giancarlo Fisichella, of course, he's our teammate. He starts fifth, head of Taylor Cottbull, sixth. Jacques Villeneuve for BAR, seventh. And we actually start eighth, which is our best ever qualifying result here. It's the first time we've actually qualified in the top ten at Hungary. But remember, we have never scored points. So that's something we'll be hoping to rectify in the race to come. So it's a 19-lap race. It's dry, which means there is no risk of any rain. And we'll be going for a uh, two-stop strategy, pitting lap seven then maybe pitting lap 13. So here we are on the starting grid. Dizzy Heights up in eighth place here, right near the front. And the lights are on, five lights. And when they go out, it signals the start of the 2000 Hungarian Grand Prix. And we're away, get quite a good start. Vilna gets bogged down in second gear there. And we move side by side with him down towards the first corner. Tony Cockbill also gets a bad run into the first corner. We got the inside of quite a few drivers, including Cockbill and our teammate Fisichella and David Coulthard who's holding it around the outside of the first corner. We'll have the inside line for the second corner and I doubt we're going to try and go around the outside. And there's no space there and not enough momentum so we slot into fifth place which is a fantastic start from eighth to fifth during the first sector of this opening lap. Dominic Foster holds station in second ahead of his teammate Michael Schumacher. Mika Hakkinen holds the lead off the start as we give David Coulthard a little a bit of a tap there but it's all fine. I, I'm going to assume that the McLarens are, oh, we go straight up the inside there. David Coulthard, he breaks nice and early into the chicane and we get the position. And he runs right across the uh, inside curve, actually, through the left-hander in the chicane. Uh, compromising his exit because it's quite bumpy there. And we're up to fourth then. I was just about to say, I think these Ferraris and McLarens are going to be much faster than those during the race. And that might still prove to be the case, but at least we're ahead of one of them, which is David Coulthard. And if there's an incident overhead, such as retirements like engine malfunctions engine faults it could be a podium but let's not get ahead of ourselves one lap down and we are up four places and we are in fourth place so end of lap three now and i'm driving to the absolute best of my abilities and it's not enough to uh, keep the gap short to michael schumacher and david Coulthard sticking right to the back of me so this is proving that it's, it's basically down to the car right now I'm, I'm exerting 100% of my potential into this race at the moment, hitting every apex, you know, the acceleration, the deceleration parts of the corners, absolutely perfect and it's still not enough. So a couple laps later we've actually managed to close the gap to Schumacher and he made a mistake through one of the fast left handers and we're going to go through a move into the second to last corner. That's not quite going to work, we've got very close between us. Maybe we can try into the last corner as well as he opens the door. I think he'll have enough of an advantage around the outside and keeps the position but down the lane straight now as we cross the line to start lap 6 we've got a great slipstream behind the Ferrari we pull to the right to pass into the first corner and we've got the position we are going to pit not this lap but the next lap and we are up to third position the next car up the road is Dominic Foster in the other Ferrari so actually Foster pulled away 2 seconds in the previous lap and we're going to dive into the pit lane the end of lap seven i think uh, foster and hacking are going into the pits as well yes they are uh, so that means michael schumacher goes on to take the lead and david coulthard will slot into second and as long as our teammate doesn't pit this lap he will take third place in this race and yes he's gone straight through so our teammate is actually running in the podium places as it stands so there's been an incident in the pits involving eddie irvine in the jaguar as he enters the pit lane here you can see hacking pulling out foster pulling out and then Irvine getting hit right up the rear by Pedro De La Rosa, who's actually steaming through the pit lane. There's uh, no regard for other drivers there, that's very dangerous. We have a look on, on board uh, Pedro De La Rosa in the Arrows car. He comes into the pit lane here. So everybody slows down as usual, and uh, Irvine slows down extra because Hakan is pulling out. And uh, Pedro De La Rosa actually speeds up 
He slammed straight into him and decides to drive around the outside of everybody else. But uh, we exit the pit lane and we are up to, well, down to 10th place. But we did jump Dominic Foster in the pit, which means we are actually a net second place in this race. Directly behind Mika Hakkinen by only a second now, so we are a second off the race lead. A few more drivers enter the pits at the end of lap 8, as we go past the start finish line to start lap 9. We're up to 4th place now, so Hakkinen's in 3rd, which means there's 2 other drivers up ahead of Hakkinen who have yet to pit. Schumacher got the jump on Foster as well by doing the overcut, as we come down the main straight, passing Jano Trulli, who was in the Jordan up ahead. And now Coulthard coming out of the pit lane right in front of Mika Hakkinen, so Coulthard by doing two extra laps, he's actually jumped um, Mika Hakkinen. So David Coulthard is in the lead of the race now as we try around the outside of Hakkinen into turn three, but that's not going to work. And the two McLarens run first and second in this race as we approach the halfway mark. But it looks like Coulthard's letting Hakkinen through, but then thinks better of it. Keeps the position. This is slowing them down the tree, and we might be able to have a look at the inside, but it's not going to work there. As Coulthard goes wide again, letting Hakkinen uh, pull side by side with him into the right left chicane they're slowing each other down here which is brilliant for us as we might be able to get another place here as Hakkinen goes off the road again we sweep past on the left into the left hander we have taken second place and that's of course after everybody's pit so we are in second place in this race this rejuvenated optimism has allowed us to catch up to Coulthard on that lap it's starting at the start of lap 12 now as we head down the main straight towards the first corner we might try a late breaking move up the inside we're side by side now with David Coulthard for the race lead he holds the position around the outside, we slot back into the slipstream, approaching the next corner, we go up the inside again, get the switch back, and we actually claim the position. We move into the race lead after overtaking both the McLarens on the previous two laps. So what was my worst track is actually turning into be one of my best as I'm putting more effort into uh, driving it quickly. It's lap 13 anyway, so we're going to head into the pits. Be interesting to see Hakkinen actually managed to get past Coulthard as well, so Hakkinen to second. And he stays out for another lap. I suspect he's going to pit at the end of lap 14 because he pit on lap 7. And we kind of switched up the strategy. So we're going to head into the pits and hopefully rejoin in, uh, well, still in the points. But I heard that that's actually going to happen. We might rejoin within the top 10 though. It's not the top 10, it's 14th place. Because of course we did pit a lap or two earlier than other drivers. The interesting thing now will be that the overcut. I didn't know this before the race, so obviously... It's uh, hindsight, it's 2020 vision, of course, but the overcut on this track seems to have such a big effect due to the amount of fuel you're carrying on board. Obviously, you'd have less if you're going an extra uh, lap or two. You'd have less than somebody pitting earlier. And the time you lose by pitting earlier is bigger than the time you might lose by going an extra lap or two. So because we pit so early for our second stop, this might hurt our chances of keeping the race lead when everybody else pits, but we'll have to wait and see. So there's a few more drivers coming out of the pits, including Dominic Foster, so at least we stay ahead of him. We're on to lap 15 out of 19 now and up to 11th place. Now as we hurdle down towards the first corner, starting lap 16, there's Mika Hakkinen rejoining the racetrack a few seconds up the road, which means we have lost out to at least Hakkinen, but there's a potential that we still be ahead of Coulthard and uh, re remain in second place after the uh, second phase of pit stops, but it's annoying that we've lost out to Hakkinen. If we had just put enough fuel in for one extra lap, uh, we could have avoided this mess, but uh, at the moment we are behind him. So we've got just over three laps to go now. Well, three laps to go, exactly now. And there's a Ferrari around the first corner. That's Michael Schumacher. He's jumped hacking him. So is he in the net race lead now? We're up to fifth, which means Schumacher's in third. There's two drives ahead of him. One of them will probably be Trolley and the other being Coulthard. And Coulthard, he might be on a one-stop strategy. So heading on to the last lap, there's Jano Trulli going into the pits. And no sign of David Coulthard. He's managed to... Well, we're on to the last lap now. Unless he pits on the last lap, he's managed a one-stop strategy. He'll be far out in the lead. So we're going to have to settle for fourth place. So David Coulthard did pit an extra time. As he crosses the line to win the race, Michael Schumacher. Good result from him. He finishes second. Mick Hakkinen rounds off the podium. We finish down in fourth, just ahead of Dominic Foster in fifth place. Usually, at this track, I'd be extremely happy with fourth place, but considering we were leading the race halfway through, it's disappointing to see us finish in fourth. Michael Dominic Schumacher, Foster, as I said, uh, rounds off the top five. Then Giancarlo Fisichella uh, picking up the last point for uh, our team Benetton there. And Taylor Cutbelt finishing down in ninth place. He'll be very disappointed with that.
So a strategic masterstroke from McLaren and for David Coulthard sees him extend his lead at the top of the table. He's now 13 points ahead of Mika Hakkinen with only a handful of races to go. Dominic Foster still holding on to third and we are still fourth place. McLaren pulling further ahead in the championship. There's no use looking at the constructors now. Ferrari comfortably in second and we have a, a long lead over uh, Williams so we're holding third position. The next race of course will be Belgium. The the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa-Francorchamps, one of my favourite, if not my favourite track. I'll see you there. Goodbye.